Today on Two Crazy Ketos, we're gonna make some fermented foods. Yogurt. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, now I will enjoy my day. Right, right after, after this. this. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews, we do recipe videos, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch, where we just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah. So, when we went to KetoCon last year, we got to try out Peak Yogurt. It is so good it was super delicious but the key about peak yogurt is it is super fatty because they use heavy cream to make it like a serving of it is about 280 calories there's something that made us really sad though what they don't ship here yes they don't ship here to florida so we decided that we're going to work on making our own yogurt and the goal is to get it as close to peak yogurt as possible and i think we've nailed it we're gonna see. So here's what we're gonna do today is we're gonna make some Instant Pot yogurt. It's a little bit of a twist on what a lot of people do, but the first thing we're gonna need to do is head to the store to get the ingredients. Okay. It is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. This is why people love to visit Florida. Welcome to Florida. All of the rain. Where you never know. One day it's 50, one day it's 90, one day it's raining. Don't get upset, it'll change in 20 minutes. Okay, so one of the things we're gonna need is a starter yogurt. Now, once you do this, you'll never have to do it again because you can keep reusing your own personal yogurt. What I like to use is something like this Organic Valley or even this Stony Brook. Um, best thing to do is make sure you get the fullest fat one you can. And what you wanna look for is on the label, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that, Rachel, make sure it says live active cultures. That's the most important part. Now, since they don't have these in little containers, I'm gonna get this little Fahe one, it's 5%. This one's got really good live active cultures too, so we're gonna use this just because I don't need this much yogurt. Okay, now we need our milk. There's a few different milk options here at Publix. You can do this Organic Valley milk. They have the Horizon Organic. They have this Maple Hill. This one works really well, it's 100% grass fed. The key to them is this. Make sure, if you can see that, Rachel, it says ultra pasteurized. Now, if you can't find one that's ultra pasteurized, which most of them are, especially the organic ones, especially the grass-fed ones, but if you happen to buy one, like I bought one where it's a cream on top, if it's not ultra pasteurized, you can still do this, but it's an extra step. You have to heat it because you gotta kill all the bacteria that was in there. So really go for the ultra pasteurized. Now, here's the difference though you're gonna look at the carbohydrates in this. And this is why we don't drink milk. 150 calories, eight grams of fat, 12 total carbohydrates with 11 grams of sugar. Compare that to, if you can find it, get this. You wanna get the Fair Life. The Fair Life, if we take a look at this, I haven't figured out how they're doing this yet, but serving size is still a cup, 150 calories, eight grams of fat, only six grams of sugar and six total carbohydrates. In the end, it doesn't matter. If you can't find this one, that's okay because when you make the yogurt, the bacteria cultures are all going to actually live off of the sugar. And then we're also gonna be straining out the way, so you're gonna get rid of all the sugar. So in the end, you'll end up with about the same carbohydrate count and you're gonna end up with the same consistency. But when you use the one that have the higher sugar, it may take just a little bit longer. This one will get you there probably an hour or two hours faster as far as straining off the way. Last ingredient, wanna get some heavy whipping cream. Now you can use the Organic Valley, you can use the Horizon. Again, you're making yogurt, I highly suggest use top quality ingredients. You're gonna get a better flavor, a better taste, a better texture when you're using good stuff. Use the organic stuff if you can, get grass fed, pasture raised. Whole Foods has a great one that doesn't even have carrageenan or anything like that in there. But we're gonna go with one of these two. Uh, Horizon's cheaper, that's the one we're gonna buy. So that's all the ingredients we need. Now we're gonna go home and make our yogurt. This is what we needed the last time we dealt with fermented food. 
kombucha explosion. Okay, we're back. Are you ready to start making yogurt? Me? Yes, you. I'm not making yogurt. That's like super complicated. No, this is really easy to make. Really? It is so easy that even Rachel could make it. You seriously think this is gonna be easy enough for me to make? Are you ready? Here's what you need. You need an Instant Pot, okay? Okay. Try to find one that has the yogurt setting if, you, if you're gonna go buy one. That is specific. There are ways to do it without the yogurt setting. Ours has a yogurt button. So all we gotta do is open up the top. I, I think like you can handle that part, right? Okay. Milk, pour it in. All of it? All of it. Taste this, see if it's bad. <laughs> Shouldn't be, we just bought it. Heavy cream. How much? Pour it in. The whole thing? The whole thing. Are you sure? Yes. Wow. Get all the little last little drops. Save that for my coffee. I'm gonna pour it right into that. Okay, I'm gonna open this up. Okay, now your yogurt. Now, again, we said this when we were in the store. We're using this one. There's actually other brands that I prefer more. You don't want uh, that Because they're grass fed, but yeah, I don't want a big thing, so we're just gonna use this one. But once you've made your yogurt, reserve a couple of tablespoons out of the batch that you make, and that will make the new one. Because the reason you're doing this is you want the active cultures in here. Oh. There is another way around. I forgot, I meant to bring this, but you can actually buy yogurt cultures on Amazon. Only Joe. But it's just as easy to just run to the store and buy some yogurt so long as it's got active cultures. That's the most important part. Okay. Okay, we're gonna put about three tablespoons of that in here and it doesn't have to be perfect. Just three, uh, oh. there's a lid on there. You do have to take the paper off first though. <laughs> so just, yeah, that's good. Like just three of those. Oop, splash in the milk. One. Yeah, there. Three. I'm like waiting for the splash to come well, in. I was trying to make it come out. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you can put that to the side. You can eat it later, whatever. That one's not total, so bad. I mean, what is this one? This is, how many carbs is this? Six carbs in the whole cup. Here you go. Not quite 12 o'clock yet, or I'd lick my finger. Okay. Take a whisk. Yes. Give it a quick whisk to make sure you mix all of the heavy cream and the uh, yogurt and everything in there. You're pretty much, that's good right there. Seriously. That's all you need to do. All right. Ready? Yes. Take your top. If you want, you could take out the seal. You don't need it. Don't blow your top. You go ahead and put it on. I don't want to be accused of helping you. Well, you took it off, so the whole thing's no, shot. No, I've got to go over this way. There you go. Wow. Close it up. Make sure that this is on vent. We're not pressure cooking. Oh. Okay, you want it on vent. What would happen if we did that? Not good. Not good. You ready? Hit the yogurt button. Yogurt. You're done. Nuh-uh. You're done. Nuh-uh. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put this off to the side. You don't have to press start? It automatically starts. So you press the yogurt button. There you go. It's going. Okay. What? What's gonna happen now okay. is for the next eight hours, wow. this is going to raise and lower the temperature inside of the pressure cooker. Mm -hmm. What that's gonna do is allow the bacteria that's in the yogurt to start feeding off of the sugars and break it Sounds down. Sounds gross. So while that's cooking, this is gonna go for eight hours, okay? I did wanna mention real quick what we were talking about in the store. The reason that we're looking for ultra pasteurized, over pasteurized, is because pasteurized milk, if you just go buy regular store bought pasteurized milk, and I have done this with pasteurized milk, it does work, mm -hmm. okay? But pasteurized milk is only heated, the way they pasteurize it is they heat it up, and the heating it up will kill, kill. off any bacteria, right? right. And that's why they said don't drink raw milk, that's the difference. Raw milk has all the bacteria in there already. Mm -hmm. So pasteurized milk is only heated, heated to 100, I think it's 161 degrees for like 15 seconds. And then they it's heat fast. it to 145 degrees for 30 seconds. And that kills off most of the bacteria. Okay. Ultra pasteurized is heated to a temperature of 
I, Armageddon. I believe it's 280 degrees. Scorched earth. Yeah, it's 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 much, it's obviously twice as warm as pasteurized. So what they're doing there is they're killing off all the bacteria. Nobody's getting out alive. So, so if you do this method, the way we're doing it right now, if you would do this method with the regular pasteurized milk, there's probably still some bacteria in there. So not a big deal, but what's hmm. gonna happen is those bacteria are gonna be fighting with your yogurt bacteria for the sugars. So you won't get a pure yogurt. Oh. And you won't, it won't be as potent of the live bacteria that we're looking for and the reason that we're eating yogurt. Man, everybody's a sugar addict. So, and a lot of times when you do it that way, it will come out much thinner. It won't be a really good Greek yogurt, which is we're looking for like a Greek yogurt, Thick. almost like a cheese kind of yogurt. Yeah. So now if you do want to do it with a pasteurized milk, there's another step. You have to take this, put it on a stove top, heat it up to 160 degrees, leave it there for a few minutes. Ain't nobody got time and for then that. You can put it into your pressure cooker because what you got to do is you got to kill any of the bacteria that may have like been growing while you're in the grocery store. It's just easier. Go buy ultra pasteurized. Most of the better quality milks in the stores anyway are yeah. either ultra pasteurized or if you're fortunate enough to get raw milk. So, but raw milk's illegal in most states. So we're, we're not need to go there. Don't but yeah, go Bonnie and Clyde. Any of these better milks and stuff, they're all going to be ultra pasteurized. So you, for the most part, won't have anything to worry about. And don't use chocolate. Here's what we're going to do. Yes. <laughs> That's going to sit for eight hours. You okay, can I'm even let it go it. a little bit longer. It's counting up. Most of the time, the pressure cooker is counting down, right? This one's counting up. So we're at four minutes, eight oh. hours. Then we're going to come back at eight hours and we're going to take it out of there. We're gonna stick it into the refrigerator for a few hours, let the bacteria keep going, and then we're gonna strain it out. Whole process takes about a day, a little bit longer. It's really only about 10 to 12 hours to make the yogurt. If you want Greek yogurt, if you want super low carb Greek yogurt. Which I do. You need another 24 hours. Oh. Okay? Okay, so it's been eight hours. Yep. Step two, you're gonna take your Instant Pot, go ahead and open it up. Ooh. Go ahead and pull that out. I'm going to get a shot in here, but you can just lift up the whole thing. It's not even super hot. Just lift it all up. Now you can give it a little jiggle. You can see that it's pretty set, right? Yes. Now all you're going to do is take your plastic wrap, mm -hmm. cover the top, stick it in the refrigerator, come back in like four hours. The whole thing. The whole thing. Of course, this is probably the hardest part, right? Actually unwrapping plastic wrap. Yes, and making it do what you want it to do. I would say probably... Do extra? Yeah, do a couple of like passes across the top. And then we're just now going to stick that in the fridge, let the bacteria keep eating away at that sugar, Ooh. and then we'll come back for the final step in a few hours. Okay. Okay, so we went a little bit longer than four hours. It's been about eight hours, but that's okay. That yeah. just means the bacteria was working hard. And uh, so here's our yogurt. Look at this. I wish I put the overhead camera on, um, but. It really looks like yogurt. Let me grab a bowl so we can kind of show people what it looks like. Looks like you need to stir it. So. You can see inside of there, we've got a nice pot of yogurt. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna grab this spoon it here. It smells like yogurt. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna give it a little stir, just so you guys can see. It's got a pretty thick consistency. But it's coming off the spoon. But it's coming off the spoon, which means there's a lot of whey in there, mm -hmm. which means there's a lot of carbs in there. So we want to get rid of that. But what I wanted you to do is you've tasted what this tastes like afterwards. I right? have, thankfully. So I'd like you to taste the difference. Oh, okay. Now, because there is a difference between the taste of what the final product is and this one here. Now that's good. It's so different. It's, it's tang. It's more tangy. It's more it's like the, your, tang. the yogurt that you're used to buying in the store. Like fruit on the bottom yogurt. Yes. Yeah, so the whey is what's making that tang. So now what we're going to do is we're going to remove most of the whey. So this is funny because this tastes like a pot of diet food. Okay. To me. I, w I was, I'm eating yogurt like this if I'm on a diet. So it's so funny having tasted the final product 
what that difference is. Right. Because so, yeah. that tastes like something you should feel guilty about because it tastes so rich. Now again, you're gonna see this in a couple minutes, but this is yesterday's batch. Yeah. This is the batch that was made before. So look at the difference of that one. It is not going anywhere. Now take a taste of that one. There is no tang. There's no tang. And we're gonna talk about it in a couple minutes for you guys, but it's gonna be 24 hours for us. But this is like eating ice cream. Yeah. It's like eating mousse, only it's nothing but Like if cheese cream. was a mousse. Yeah. Okay, so you ready to show you how to take it from this to this? Yeah. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get another pot. And now, unfortunately my bag isn't quite big enough to go across this one. I have some more on order. Okay. But you can use a nut milk bag or you can just use cheesecloth in, I know, you're thinking nut milk. Nut milk. Okay. Nut bag. I, I just want to say nut milk bag. Nut milk okay, bag. Okay. Now it's out of my system. Okay. So you can use a nut milk bag. Okay. I'll leave a link for one down below. These are really cheap. It's like $6 for two of them. Okay. And they're reusable. You can wash them. So nut milk bags are very inexpensive. Very inexpensive. It's pretty much a cheesecloth in a bag. Okay. Or you can get cheesecloth, put several layers, put it in a strainer. I like it this way because I don't want to put it all in a strainer. I just, this is much easier to use. So this is what they use when they like grind up almonds or something like that and Same put it in water and they're making their own almond milk. Okay. So now all what I want you to do is you're going to just dump that right in here. This is funny because the, the stuff that it turns out being, you couldn't dump it this easily. No, there's actually a little more in here. We don't want to lose it. Cause I'm telling you when the batch is made, all you're going to think of is Oh man, with every bite, I'm making this batch smaller. Yeah. Okay, so now that we've done that, okay. what we're gonna, this, the nut milk bags, what I like about them has a little string on it. Nut milk bag. Okay. Ugh. Now we're gonna just take that string, we're gonna come up like this. Then we're gonna take wooden spoon, oh, okay. anything you have. We're gonna kind of wrap it around that wooden spoon. And then I'm gonna take the string and just do the same thing, wrap it around. Okay. So you're just twisting it around. Basically. And then this you can kind of come underneath like this. Okay? Okay. And then usually what I'm gonna do is keep twisting just to make it a little bit tighter. Twist your nut bag. <laughs> or you can come back later and do it, which is usually what I come do. Come back later and twist your nut bag. Then I'm gonna take a rubber band. Okay. Okay. And do the same thing. Kind of just secure it. Okay. And then what I like to do, sometimes this is a little messy, is just kind of separate the bag. Okay. I'm not saying, not even one word. I'm not even saying anything. So it's like that. Okay. Okay. Now what's going to happen is you can see. You've made all testicles. Of this, <laughs> all of this whey is going to drip out. So now I'm going to hang it here. Okay. And what you're going to do, you may have to come back because it's going to keep dripping out the whey. No way. And then you want to get this higher and higher and higher because this is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And then we're going to come back in about, you can anywhere between 15 to 24 hours, depending on the consistency that you want. We want it really, really thick. So we're going to let this go for 24 hours and all of that way is going to come out and we're going to go from the consistency you had to this. Worth the wait. Okay. So we will be back in 24 hours and again throughout the next 24 hours I'm just going to keep tightening this up over and over and over again so that it just gets higher and higher and higher. You want to totally shrink this nutmeg. Yes. Okay. So it's been 24 hours. All of the whey is strained out and this is what we have left. Just a nutbag sack. <laughs> okay. We're going to take this. We're going to put this over in another bowl for a second. I'm going to show you what we have left should have between three to four cups of whey. That is a lot of left liquid. Left over. So we're just gonna measure this out. Is there anything you can do with this? There is. I don't know much about what you can do with it as far as keto because this is like all of your carbohydrates and sugars in here. Bucket of carbs. So there is almost four cups of whey here. Wow. Now just to give you an idea of what this equates to, if you look online, a cup of whey 
depending on which site you go to, is between 60 to 65 calories per cup. Wow, and that's four. It's about um, a quarter to a half a gram of fat per cup. And then I'm, I think it's two grams of protein per cup. Okay. Most importantly, 12, some sites say 12, some sites say 13 carbs per cup. Per cup? So that means that right here, we actually have, what does that come out to be? If you, let's go with 12, 12 carbs per cup. There's 48 carbohydrates in here. Wow. And we started out with 58 carbs. So, That's but we'll, we'll get into the nutrition in a minute. So we're going to put this to the side. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our yogurt out of here. Now I did want to mention, I don't know if we mentioned in the last segment, you don't have to kind of tie it up and do all of this. You do need to put it in either some cheesecloth or a nut bag. Yeah. <laughs> So you don't have to do it this way. You could just put it again into a strainer, put your nut bag into the strainer and then sit it over another pot. I just prefer to do it this way. I find it a little bit easier. It fits in the refrigerator better this way. I was gonna way. say, does it, do you feel like it's straining it out quicker? Well, it would do the same thing, but I just like the fact that I can keep making it tighter and tighter. <laughs> okay. I just, I don't even know where to go with you anymore. Yeah. So this is what we have. And uh, we're going to dump it into this wow. bag. Wow. That, it looks like a mozzarella. It looks, it's kind of like cream cheese. I'm going to go get rid of this. Get rid of your nut bag. And I'm going to grab you a couple spoons. Now, that here's the thing. Is that when you do this, you're going to see this is a very, very thick consistency. I don't know if you can see this. Way different than yesterday. So it's a very different consistency. This is almost the consistency, I would say like of a, a soft spread cream cheese. Yes. Okay, so what we're going to do to give this a little bit more creamy consistency, now one way you could do it is leave some of that whey in there, but then you're up in the carbs. No way. So <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take a mixer. Okay. And do you want me to do this? Or are you no, gonna do I'll it? do it. And just kind of add some air, give it a little floss. You don't have to do this too long. It's thick. Turn it up. All right, now we're cooking. That should be good. So we'll just get it off of the edge. So we're gonna put it off to the side. Now you're gonna see it's got it's still upside down, okay? But it's got that just a little bit creamier of a consistency, if you can see that. So you wanna go ahead and taste this? Heck yes, I want to taste this. Oop, a little bit more. Okay. Is that yogurt? Oh my goodness. Doesn't have the tang. No tang. The tang's gone away. I mean, it just fills your mouth with just this rich creaminess. Okay, yeah. Okay, so let's show you what we're gonna do. Wow. Here's the problem. If I put this in the refrigerator, every time I walk past my refrigerator, oh, yeah, it's gone. I'm gonna be taking a spoon of it. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we have these little cup measures or cup storage cups. We have two different ones. These are like half cup ones. Get them from Target. And I think it's six of them for like $2.18. They're the perfect little snack size. And then you have these are the Ziploc ones. They have a half cup measure on them, but I think they actually hold a cup. And these were like $2.70, but you only got three or four of them. This is nice if you want to have the yogurt and then maybe put a little topping and have room for that. Right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna quickly just measure this out and what you wanna do is go for eight or nine. Nine is gonna give you the perfect serving size. Okay. So we're just gonna, you wanna, we'll just, here, let me grab you one. You can just grab one. So our goal is nine. Yeah, and so these cups should be about three quarters away full, like up to the bottom there. Let's do it. Now if you wanna get exact, you could go back in and weigh them out, which is a lot of times what I'm gonna do. I think you're about right. Cause yeah. it, so this one weighs 150, but again, bigger container. This one weighs 150. So, but again, bigger container, but you get the idea. Right. 
And then we can just take these and put the uh, little storage caps on. And this but, is perfect lunch size. And we'll save one out. And I mean, they're small, but they're mighty because they're so rich. What we do is we get a little bit of lollies. Oh, nice. Just a little bit, maybe like a half a serving. I forgot what's a serving on this one. 25 grams, yeah. is 28 grams. Mm -hmm. So let's just do like maybe a little, wow, that's a serving. So we'll just do like maybe like a half a serving of it. Crumble on top. A little bit of crumble on top. Now, how's that for a yogurt? Wow. It's like having cream cheese. I mean, uh, cream, um, cheesecake. There you go. Because it is so rich. Ready? It's like you've got the cheesecake crust. Right? Mm-hmm. That is nice. You want to talk about nutrition? Yes, please. Okay. Remember, the goal was peak yogurt right because we love peak yogurt i mean we devoured it last year at ketocon i plan on devouring it again at ketocon this year if exactly. they're there but the problem is we can't get peak yogurt here in south florida so the goal was duplicate peak yogurt so we're going to start off with everything now remember what the ingredients were we started off with just a couple of tablespoons of yogurt, yogurt. then we had the container of fair life mm -hmm. And then we had a pint of heavy cream. So what are we talking about budget-wise? Well, it depends on the milk you're going to use. Right. But if you look at our budget, I, let's say it was, what, $5 for the Fairlife uh -huh. and $3.59 like for the, whatchamacallit, the heavy cream. Mm -hmm. Figure 10 bucks. 10 bucks. 10 bucks. And this is what it made. Right. Now again, you can use less quality milk. We're using a higher quality milk. And like we said in the earlier you segment. You taste the difference. Yeah, like we said in the earlier segment, if you don't have the Fairlife and have to use the ones that have a little bit higher sugar, in the end, you should end up around the same because I've used both kinds of milk and I ended up around the same. It just takes longer for that whey to come off. One of the things the Fairlife is doing is, is they're actually removing some of those excess sugars before it gets to you. Now, if I want to make my next batch, I don't have to rebuy the other no. yogurt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually save one of these containers or probably only need about half, mm -hmm. but just take one, stick it in the freezer. Oh. Okay. It's not going to kill the bacteria. Stick it in the freezer. Otherwise, you can may accidentally eat one. Oh, okay. Okay. Stick it in the freezer, and then when you're ready to go make your yogurt, you can actually pull it out of the freezer and do it. Or you can start another batch right now, depending on how long you're going to eat this yogurt. If you have a bunch of people who are going to eat yogurt in the house, yeah. start another batch right now. I would say, unless you're going to go onto like Amazon and buy some fresh cultures, if you're going to reuse the yogurt like from the store, like using that as your starter... You're gonna get about five batches out of this. So you're gonna make it, then take this batch to mm -hmm. make the next batch, then take that batch to make the next batch. Do you get it? I see where this but is going. But what's gonna happen is, is by the time you get to about five, you'll still keep getting yogurt, but it's gonna get tangier and tangier and tangier. Isn't that interesting? Because just like anything else, the bacteria starts changing, it starts adapting. So what I would tell you is probably by four to, the fourth to fifth batch, where you made a batch from a batch from a batch from a batch start from over. a batch, start over. So go get some fresh yogurt. Or you could actually take one of these, mm -hmm. stick it in the freezer, Yeah. take another one, use that for your starter of your next batch, and then once you get through your five, you can go back to this original batch. So huh. you could really get... 10 things out of this first one. Does okay. that make sense? Yes, that's cool. Worst case, you go to the store, you buy a container of yogurt, or you buy the live bacteria on Amazon. It's just easier. Just run to the store and spend $1.50 and buy some yogurt. You're yeah. only using a you tablespoon. You don't have to wait tail. for it. Okay, we did all of that. Let's get back to nutrition. Yes. Okay, so with what we started out with, we had a total with all of our ingredients of 2,650 calories. 
It was 216 grams of fat, 123 grams of protein, and 58 total carbohydrates. Okay, that's scary sounding. That was where we started with our ingredients. Now remember, the way yogurt works is the bacteria is eating the sugar. Unfortunately, we really have no way of measuring how much of the sugar they've eaten, um, unless you send it off to a lab or something. So the only thing we could really do is figure out what do we have left. Okay. So we've taken out four cups of whey. That's serious. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract the whey from what we started. Mm -hmm. So that means that this, we're gonna go on the low end. They're saying 60 to 65 calories, depending on the website. Be safe. 240 calories, one gram of fat, eight grams of protein, 48 carbs. Now again, some websites say it's 13 carbs per cup, which would bring this up to, what is that, 26.54? But we're gonna err on the side of caution. Right, we're gonna err on the side of caution. So if we subtract this, from what we started, this batch is two, except for the lollies, can't count the lollies. Right, obviously. 2,410 calories, 215 grams of fat, 115 grams of protein, and 10 carbs for in all everything. of this. Now, I love math, by the way, if you haven't figured this out. So I'm sorry if we're kind of like being a little dorky here. Each cup, it's, if you weighed them all out the same, each cup, you're looking at about five ounce cups of yogurt here, 267 calories per cup, 24 grams of fat, 12 grams of protein, and based on only using the lower end on the carbs on whey. Yes. For, that means 12 carbs per cup. Each one of these, 1.1 total carbohydrates. I love that. Now, that is not even counting the sugars that the bacteria have eaten and are continuing to eat in there. Because remember, live active cultures, that's the whole reason we wanna start eating yogurt is because we wanna get that good healthy gut bacteria. The carbs are reducing as we speak. Yeah, so I'm going to tell you that most likely, you have less than a carb in there, but let's err on the side of caution yeah. and say it's one carb. You can even go all the way up and say it's two carbs if you want, but you got one carb in there or less than one carb. This is 80% fat. You're just smiling like the numbers are up here. I'm just like, wow, this is a lot of numbers. Okay, so last numbers. You're so excited. Peak yogurt. Okay. The whole goal was get to peak yogurt. Did you equal them? A five ounce cup of peak yogurt, plain, because that's what only we can yeah. eat on keto. 270 calories. Each one of these is 267 calories. 24 grams of fat. What's in ours, like 23.9? 23.9 grams of fat. I don't think you're gonna get much closer. Peak yogurt, eight grams of protein. How much was ours? 12 grams of protein. Wow. Peak yogurt, four total carbohydrates. Ours, one. Oh, uh, wow. Now, in the end, I think we're pretty close to peak yogurt. Pretty darn close. I think you're spot on on the, on the texture. Oh yeah. And, and I think we're spot on on the flavor. I feel like the taste is really, really good. Yeah. I mean, so. just really, really good. I think you'll really enjoy it. I think that is not just great as a yogurt, but it is fantastic as a sour cream mm -hmm. replacement. Yeah, you you should really be using this as your sour cream. You yeah. can use this as a cream cheese. You can see how thick it is. It's got a cream cheese texture. Yeah. So if you use something you wanna put cream cheese on, Put this, now I'm not talking about like heated ground beef. No. But like, you know, maybe you got a um, keto mug cake you wanna put a little bit of cream cheese on or something like that. Put a dollop on top. Mix this with a little bit of peanut butter. Like that's my thing. A, spoon, a half a spoon of peanut butter with a half a spoon of cream cheese and you put that in your mouth, do it with this. Wow, that's incredible. So, well, this is our new favorite thing to eat. I think you guys are gonna really enjoy it. Let us know down in the comment section what some of the toppings are that you would put on here. I mean, personally, we don't really do berries, but we've got the lollies, but it really doesn't need anything. Also share, what are your experiences as you go into places like Bed Bath & Beyond and ask for a nut bag? <laughs> Where's your nut bags? Can you point me in the direction of your nut bags? <laughs> Guys, please do us a favor and hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we stuff something into a nut bag, you'll be alerted to it. And until next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you.